Hi, I'm Gary Rubenstein, and this is the eighth and final part of my Newton's Principia Explained. Uh, so far, uh, the thing we're trying to prove is this theorem that I have up here, that L times QR over QT squared is equal to 2PC times QV squared over GV uh, times QX squared. And L is a constant related to the ellipse. It's actually equal to... Uh, 2 times BC squared, where BC is the semi-minor um, axis, over AC, which is the uh, semi-major axis. So far, in the last couple of parts, we've proved four proportions over here. One, two, three, four. And there's going to be one last proportion, and then this whole thing is going to come together. So I'll show you with that how to do the last uh, proportion. For this, we're going to need a new line on this diagram. Uh, for this last part, I've introduced this, uh, this point F. F is on uh, line DK so, so that um, PF is, is perpendicular, so I've got uh, a right angle over there. And I hit a couple of lines that weren't important for this part. Uh, first thing I want you to notice is that we've got this triangle EPF. It's a, it's a right triangle. Um, we have this other triangle, this this one up here, QXT. Now, QV is parallel to RZ, and um, so is uh, D. So is DK, and for that reason, this angle, these these angles are going to be equal because these lines were parallel. All three of these lines are parallel. So we've got these angles, and we've got uh, Q, QT was constructed to be perpendicular to, uh, to EP. So, so one thing I can say is that triangle EPF is similar to triangle XQT. And when, when I have similar triangles, I can make proportions. So for instance, I can say that QX which is the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle over QT, which is across from that smaller angle, is equal to EP over PF. Now, if I square both sides of this equality, I get that QX squared over QT squared is equal to EP squared over P F squared. Now, established in way before in his first proportion, he's already established that E P is equal to C A. So now I can rephrase this proportion as Q X squared over Q T squared equals C A squared over PF squared. Now I mentioned in the last video this unusual property of ellipses that if you put a parallelogram around the ellipse like this that the area of the parallelogram does not change. So this rectangle here where the, uh, the major and minor axis go across it has the same area as any of the parallelograms like this where this line has to be sort of tangent to the ellipse and this goes through the center and this line is, uh, is parallel to, to the tangent line. So what this means is uh, each of these parallelograms is cut into four pieces the way I have it so that one-fourth or four of these rectangles here or these parallelograms will equal four of, of any of them. Well, that's what's going to happen in this picture. When I move P this is the line PF. PF is the height of one of these four sort of quarters of this parallelogram. And the, uh, the base will be this, this line over here. So we'll, we're going to be able to say that 4 times CA times CB, where uh, B is up here. So CA times CB is, is this quarter of the rectangle, will be equal to, if I rotate this a bit, uh, 4 times C D, this is, this is a D down here, that's the base of this uh, parallelogram, times, uh, times PF. So let me show you how that fits into our argument. 
So I've put down here this sort of consequence of that parallelogram uh, rule, the equal area parallelograms around the ellipse. He uses that here. You could rearrange this as a, uh, as a proportion, sort of the opposite of cross-multiplying. CA over PF equals CD over CB. So those, those are equivalent. Uh, but CA over PF is also the second half of this proportion here. So I can replace that proportion and get QX squared over QT squared instead equals uh, CD squared over CB squared. And this is the fifth and final proportion. Let's see how it all fits together now. So here's my complete list of the five proportions. Notice how this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, and this one's equal to that, and this one's equal to that. And the L over QR that starts it is what we want to have on top here, and the QT squared on the bottom is what we want to have here. So what he's going to do is actually multiply these five equations together. And let's see what happens. Well, when I multiply all the left sides together, what happens is that everything is going to cancel out. And all we're left with is this, L times QR over QT squared. Uh, the five proportions on the right become this pretty ugly, um, ugly thing. But we're going to be able to simplify that by replacing this L with what it's equivalent to, which is uh, 2BC squared over AC. Uh, this AC is going to cancel out with this AC. This PC is going to cancel out with, uh, with one of those uh, PCs. Here's a CD squared, which can cancel out with this CD squared. And this CB squared down here can cancel out with this uh, BC squared. Well, when the smoke clears, what we're going to be left with is, well, all, all that's left on top is the 2, the PC, and the QV squared. And all that's left on the bottom is the GV and the QX squared. So this is what we're left with. And that is exactly what we, uh, we were trying to prove in the first place. So he's proved his unusual theorem about ellipses. Now, just since there's two minutes left, I can also summarize how this leads to, as a corollary, the inverse square law. In this picture, I've just proved Newton's big theorem here. Well, um, when Q gets really, really close to P, uh, what happens is that um, PC basically becomes uh, 2, 2 PC becomes GV. They, they become the same thing. PC is, is from here to here. GV is from here to here. But as Q gets really close to B to P, V gets really close to P also. So this thing basically cancels out. And the same thing happens with QV and QX. As Q gets, uh, gets really close to P, QV and QX become the same line segment. So that cancels out, becomes 1. And we can uh, rearrange this as QR over QT squared uh, is equal to 1 over L. But earlier in the series, especially number 4, I showed that the force is equal to QR, or it's proportional to QR over QT squared times QS squared. Sorry, times PS squared. But this QR over QT squared can be replaced with 1 over L, which is L is a constant, so it's 1 over PS squared. And that's the inverse square law. Now, I learned this mostly from uh, this book here, The Key to Newton's Dynamics. I highly recommend it. The end.